And good morning, everybody. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first actual live broadcast this year, 2017, um, since I've been out of the studio all week, feeling like hell. And you can probably hear it. I'm still not at the top of my game here, but at least I'm here doing this. Now, yesterday, we had a really fun, not Rec not live, but recorded photo moment because the successor to this glorious camera, the GH4, uh, now called GH5, was announced officially, like with the full on all the details announced yesterday. Panasonic had released uh, some very, very scant details about this back at Photokina last year. And uh, that's the big photo trade show in Germany in what was it, September, I think, or maybe October. And uh, very, very little details then, but they announced the big announced big reveal yesterday, a bunch of marketing videos around it and so on. And it is exciting. So yesterday, if you haven't seen it yet, go back into the archives, um, check it out on the YouTube. You just go to this URL down here. There you go. Uh, photojustcom slash moments. That'll take you to the YouTube channel. And you can check out my kind of uh, first look analysis at the camera. Fun stuff. Anyway, today's photo moment is a very specific, answering a very specific question from one of my viewers. And uh, let me just uh, bring that back up here. So this comes from uh, Mr. Ben McCartney. Ben, thank you very much for following and for your awesome questions. You've been throwing lots of good stuff at me, and I really appreciate it. This is cool. I like getting uh, good, strong, good, tough questions, tough info here. And um, oh, by the way, I am, oh, look at this. The whole interface on Facebook has changed for going live. Oh, well. Anyway, so um, Ben was referring to, uh, well, it doesn't matter what video. He had a question that said, can I run down res 4K signal from my GH4's HDMI and multi-channel audio from a mixer using the Panasonic YAG base unit to stream 1080p with embedded audio to YouTube? Also, are there sync issues that need to be resolved externally? And I responded back to the comment, that's a big question. I, we're going to take this one on the air because that's just way too big to, um, to try and cover in like text. It would take me forever. So let's break this down. Um, okay, first part of the question, can I run a down 4K signal from the GH4's HDMI? So that for, yes. So when you're playing, let's actually, let me back up a little bit more and I'm gonna include a little info about the GH5 in this. Um, okay, on the GH4, when you're shooting in 4K, you weren't using the full sensor. So you have a sensor that is, I forget how many pixels wide, but it's significantly more than 4K wide. And if you're shooting 1080p, it used, I guess, all of it. I'm presuming the full width, maybe even not the full width. That I don't know for sure. But if you're fully using 1080p, you would get a, a more of the sensor in use. And it would downsample to 1080p. When you're shooting 4K, however, on the GH4, then what happens is Panasonic decided to basically crop into the sensor and use exactly the 3840s or yeah, 3840 pixels wide for 4K. 38, 40 pixels wide of the sensor and leave the whatever couple hundred or thousand or whatever it was off the side, just kind of drop those off. So you had a native one-to-one -one pixel from the sensor to the 4K output, which is absolutely fine, except that it meant that when you switched from HD or 1080p to 4K, your field of view changed. You actually punched into the picture a little bit, which would be really annoying if you were a setup like, for example, I have set up here. This is one of the things when I had the GH4 here pointing at me is I used to do, I'd switch regularly between 1080p HD and 4K, depending on what I was doing. And that meant I had to reframe. I had to zoom the lens to get the same framing up. Definitely not ideal, um, a little bit on the annoying side. And so, um, wow, it looks like we just lost a live broadcast. Oh, well, say love you. We're going to keep going. Um, and so uh, what you could do as an alternative was you could leave the camera in 4K all the time. Right? So you can just set it to 4K so it's always in the cropped. And then tell the camera to output a down 1080p over the HDMI. So this kind of solved the problem of the picture shifting, um, the field of view shifting when you went from 1080p to 4K. Uh, yeah, so that's where that's really it. That's basically what it was. So it would allow you to downsample the, the 4K output to 1080p. And it's just a setting in the camera. You go in there and you say on the HDMI out, um, downsample, and you can say yes, no, or auto. And if it's set to auto, it'll sense what's on the other end and try to make a guess as to what it should be, which actually works really, really well. Um, so that's the first part of that. So can I run a down res 4K signal from the GH4's HDMI? Yes, you can. Now, how this compares to the GH5, which different is on the GH5 now, the when you're shooting HD or shooting 4K, you're using the same full width of the sensor and it is downsampling from there because it's wider than 4K. 
um, it's uh, the full sensor width is wider than 4K. It's downsampling to 4K or downsampling to HD, which means you're going to get even greater resolution, greater fidelity, I guess you would be a better way to say it, um, out of your 4K signal, which is pretty slick. It's one of the really cool things about the GH5. Okay. Um, okay, and then the second part is and multi-channel audio from a mixer using the Panasonic YAG base unit. So the YAG... Shoot, do I, it's, is it here? I guess it's not in here. The YAG is is a big clunker thing, and I've talked about it a few uh, before in other videos. The thing that goes on the bottom of the camera that gives you um, XLR inputs, and it gives you SDI outputs. Now, I've gone into this before. The My expectation of the SDI outputs was that whatever you set the camera to, that's what you would be getting out the SDI. Turns out that was not the case. So I expected that if I set the camera to UHD or 4K at 24p, that's what I would get out of the SDI ports, the same as you get out of the HDMI ports. Not the case. And this is a really important one, Ben. If, um, if you're trying to do this, make sure that you know that the SDI ports will not give you whatever resolution you've set in the camera. That only will only go out the HDMI port. What comes out of the SDI is essentially designed for reference monitoring. So this is designed to be, and I learned this the way after I had actually set everything up, is designed essentially for a film set where you've got multiple people monitoring the show. You've got a a reference monitor, you know, a professional broadcast reference monitor on set, and you can run an, an SDI cable from the camera straight into a reference monitor. And you can have up to four of them because there's four outputs on there. Point is that it was output 1080i60 almost no matter what you set the camera to. There was one other resolution it would go. I think it was, I want to say 1080 PSF 2398. I think that's what it was. So it's a progressive segmented frame. It's a whole different thing. Um, anyway, you cannot get, unless you're shooting 1080i60, that is not what you're going to get out of the SDI ports. So just to set that aside. But if you're using the YAG just for the XLR inputs, then that's fine because then you still would use the HDMI out and the YAG itself has an HDMI out that you would then send out to whatever your source is going to be. Again, to compare to the GH5, for the GH5, they have eliminated the YAG. There is no more big, hunky YAG to go on the bottom. Uh, they've actually replaced it with a much smaller unit. Sits on top. It's powered by the hot shoe. And all it does is XLR in and out. Uh, well, in. I guess not out. XLR in. It, um, it eliminated the whole SDI thing altogether. Because I guess they realized that it really wasn't, there wasn't much of a point to it. Okay, so... The question specifically is, um, is can I run the downrest 4K signal from the HDMI and multi-channel audio from the mixer using the AG base unit? So yes, so you've got a mixer and this is what I have here and I can't pan the camera over, but I got a big mixer sitting over here. My microphone, um, whatever, other cameras, uh, what else is plugged into it? There's a, a background music track for when I'm offline. There's a few other things that plug into the mixer that all feeds, in my case, feeds straight into my switcher. But if I was using the camera with the YAG um, attachment on it, then yes, I could feed that audio straight into the YAG. So I'd have all my mixed down audio going into the YAG and then outputting through that HDMI port. So, so far we're good here, Ben. So far, everything you've asked about, you can do. You can output a down res 4K signal, down res to 1080p, mixing it with the audio coming from your your analog mixing console that is being pumped through the XLR inputs on the YAG. Okay, so so far so good. Um, and then you say to stream 1080p with embedded audio to YouTube. So yes, yeah, so you, your HDMI comes out and then you, whatever streaming solution you're going to use, whether you're plugging that HDMI into a video like I'm doing right now, or you're plugging it into a, a computer running um, uh, running Wirecast, something like that, or the um, one of the Epiphan units, which still do not work. And we are going to talk about that probably tomorrow. Um, I have an update for you. I think I'll update on that tomorrow. So if you're streaming into one of these, which you can't do right now, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Um, so whatever the solution is, doesn't matter. Your HDMI signal will have your 1080p video with your embedded audio. Um, and that's great. And so that's that. So then the last part of your question, and this is the kicker. You say, also, are there sync issues that need to be resolved externally? Aha. So, this has been the bane of my live broadcasting existence here. I mean, absolutely the source of all of my problems. Um, oh, and like, I guess things are running properly now. Um, Sean, hello. Thank, thank you. Thank you for watching. And Ryan Green is saying hi to Sean. Oh, look, Ryan. <laughs> That's my Ryan. See, I am completely loopy out of it. Um, uh, 
so this had been the again absolute bane of my existence. So here's the thing. <laughs> now Ryan's laughing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a half a few for anyway. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm so tired. I should not be. I should be home right now. Um, when you're outputting video from the, I can hear you laughing, stop it, <laughs> outputting video from the camera, the video signal that is coming out of the HDMI is delayed from real time by about four frames. And this is, as I've said this repeatedly, and I want to make sure that, you know, this record is straight on this, this is not a problem with the GH4. This is any camera with an HDMI output. There is a processing delay from what hits the camera sensor, yada, yada, before it gets out for the HDMI. And on this particular camera, it's about four frames. It could be a little bit more, it could be a little bit less, depending on the camera, but there is a delay. You will not get a real-time output. Now, if anyone out there knows of a camera that will give you real-time, truly real-time output on the HDMI port, by all means, let me know in the comments. But it is my experience that you, there is not a camera out there because there is an inherent processing delay that happens when going to HDMI. What you need is a camera with SDI output, which is why I'm now using this Black, Black Magic um, Micro Cinema camera, which has native SDI output, and I have real time. Okay, but that's a different topic. Okay, so the video is coming out of the HDMI port four frames later than real time. The audio that's being fed into the YAG is, of course, in real time because there's no processing delay going through the mixer going into the YAG. So that's fine. The Pro, the, the YAG, well, the camera itself, I guess, it's, I don't know where this happens in the camera and the YAG, is smart enough to know that that audio signal needs to be in sync with the video, and so it holds on to the audio for four frames and then outputs it together. So the signal coming out of the HDMI will be in sync. And there is, in fact, a setting in the camera, um, and it might just be for monitoring, which would make sense. You can choose to monitor in real time or uh, recording time, I think they call it, or it's, you know, that's not right, but whatever. You can choose to monitor in real time or monitor what's actually being captured, or in this case, output on the HDMI. Um, but that's probably only off the headphone port off of here. It doesn't matter. Anyway, point is that the audio and video coming out of the GH4 will be in sync, but four frames delayed from real time. Okay, so why is this a problem? If you are just producing a show, Right, let's say that now I'm behind the camera, I'm controlling producing the show, I'm monitoring audio, I've got my talent on stage. This is all fine. A four frame delay is perfectly fine because it's not going to affect anybody. Nobody's going to know. The problem comes in when you yourself need to monitor your own dialogue. So if I need to monitor my own dialogue along with everything else that's in my switching system, that will be four frames delayed. And so I'll be hearing my own voice through my headphones four frames out of sync. And that will drive you insane. It is it is completely impossible. You cannot operate that way. Um, your, I, I always say that your brain will crawl out of your head and strangle you if you try to do this. You can't. So, um, so what that means is that you can't monitor yourself, which it can be kind of a problem, right? If you're doing a live production where you are basically the person on stage, if you're the talent and the producer, let's put it that way, which is what I'm doing here, right? I'm running the show and I'm on the show. I need to be able to monitor not just my own dialogue, but I need to be able to monitor everything else that's happening. If I'm having a conversation, because I have a whole Skype setup system in here, if I'm having a conversation with someone, I need to be able to hear them. So I got to monitor that. If I'm doing something off my computer, I need to be able to monitor that. Um, I also need to know if things aren't working, right? If I have let's say that I've got a computer set up to play something and I go, fine, I'll just, I'm not going to monitor that. I'm only going to monitor my own audio and I'll talk about how to do that in a second. Uh, and I hit play and I, I have to now assume that the, the audio is actually playing through and that the audience is hearing it. But as I was just explaining to Ryan this morning, assumption is the mother of all <laughs> says you probably know. So we can't assume that you have to monitor. So I need to monitor the entire show, which means including my own dialogue. So, okay, so let's back up a little bit. Let's say that you don't need to monitor the entire show. You're the live talent. You've got live talent, right? And then you've got a producer. So the talent only needs to monitor themselves. Um, or whatever else the producer wants to send to them. And that's fine. That's a whole separate mixing board. Their microphone audio can get routed into two different places. It can be split into another mixing board, routed back to them. There's absolutely ways to make that work, but it means somebody else has to be controlling what the talent does and doesn't hear and turning things on and off and so on and so on. 
Um, it just doesn't work for a one-man operation, which is essentially what this is here. So um, let's see here. Is there anything I need to add to that? This is a very complex setup, but um, but Ben, I think what you're doing, you're trying to do something that is essentially the same as what I was doing here, um, and you're going to run into those same issues if you are, in fact, on camera. If you're not on camera yourself, you don't need to monitor the talent in real time um, because you're the talent yourself, then you're going to be fine. It's when you have to monitor yourself that things fall apart quickly. So the way... Okay, let's talk about how I resolved this issue for so long, because I did it like this for about a year with the GH4. Um, so let's see here. Initially, I had it where the my dialogue and my video were four frames out of sync for the live broadcast. This allowed me to monitor my dialogue and everything else on the system in real time, feed that system straight, feed that audio straight into the switcher, and feed the video from the camera into the switcher as a separate signal. The video arrived four frames later, which is what was broadcast. So for the first year or so of the show, you may have noticed that my dialogue was about four frames out of sync. Now for a live broadcast, you just kind of say, you know what, I can deal with that because no one's going to look at a live broadcast and go, eh, it's out of sync. Because let's face it, there's so much crap happening on the internet, you never know what's at fault. And so you just kind of accept it. It's okay. Yeah, you know, it's okay. But I knew, and I wasn't happy about that. Also, uh, when I'd go to uh, to upload the recorded broadcast later up to YouTube or wherever, then I would just slip them back into sync and so the problem went away. But the live, that was a problem. Okay, so then, all right, so how do I solve this problem? So um, one of the other solutions that I had, well, one of the solutions I wanted to have was to feed all of the audio so from my Skype system, from the Mac, from wherever else, into my ear, but mute my own dialogue, right? So looking at my ATEM switcher, in fact, here, let me just pull this up. Oh, I'm not plugged in here. Um, going through my ATEM switcher, I wanted to send all of the audio except for my dialogue to my ears, but you can't. The ATEM does not allow that to happen. So I'm just waiting for things to sync up here and I will switch over to this. Uh, let's go full screen on this. Yeah, this will work. Okay. Um, Mm -hmm. There we go. So this is the uh, the control surface for the audio. So these buttons down here are uh, mute, are monitor buttons, right? So I can say monitor uh, this camera, right? So now I'm monitoring that. Now I want to monitor that one. So I monitor that. But what I can't do is monitor multiple simultaneously. So there's no way to there's no way to select multiple ones at once. And even worse, there is no way to mute. A single track, right? There's no way for me to mute for monitoring a single track. So what that meant was I could I could choose to monitor one signal that's part of my path. So if all I was doing was interviewing someone, then this was acceptable. Um, if all I was going to do is play a video, then this was acceptable. But what what can and did happen to me was I'd get other audio that snuck in somehow because I forgot to mute something, something was on I didn't realize, something was off that I thought was on, and I'm either playing audio and nothing's coming through, or I'm not doing anything but audio is coming through from somewhere else that I didn't realize, and I have no way to know because I'm not monitoring that channel. So it only worked as far as I could monitor a single track. I was not able to... Um, I was not able to monitor my own audio through that, but I would then take through my mixer an output of my dialogue through a second mixer and then back into my ear. Complete cluster, but it worked. It worked as long as I only had one channel, but it was a very frustrating experience. And so I finally decided to go for the Blackmagic camera, which gives me the real time output. So I hope that helps. Um, I hope that really made a difference there. Uh, ben, I hope that answers all your questions. That's a very long answer to a, um, Short question, but a very, very detailed, specific question. So now I'm going to take a look at the comments here because Sean is giving me a hard time about something. Um, Sean says, I always assume the camera is in focus, is focused. I have no idea what you're talking about, buddy. Um, Sean and I have a running joke about focusing cameras, so we'll just leave that one be. Um, hopefully I'm in focus here. Hopefully that's not what you're talking about. All right, so that's that. So Ben, if, uh, if that didn't answer all your questions or you have follow-ups, you know where to put them. 
just stick them in the comments there on YouTube. Um, and yeah, I guess that's about it. So thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, happy New Year. I didn't say that yesterday. So happy New Year to you all. And uh, I've got a, a series of specific things I'm going to address over the next few photo moments. Next week, Wednesday evening, I leave for the Oaxaca, Mexico a workshop. So I will be then doing some broadcast from there as much as possible. It'll be interesting to see how much I can do because I know internet's not going to be all that great down there, but um, we'll see what we can do. All right, guys, that's it. Um, as always, if you have not subscribed on YouTube and you're watching it there, please do. Appreciate the subscribes on there. And uh, yeah, that's it. Take care. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>